I'm uh, Rob van Kranenburg. Well, my background is in uh, literature, language and literature. But that's not what I, why I'm here. So I'm here because I've been working with uh, something called Internet of Things for the past 20 years. And that's mainly um, about how technology is, is sort of surrounding us fully and is creating a kind of virtual world all around us um, that we don't see, that's very difficult for us to, to perceive. But that's becoming really very, um, very powerful in the sense that it's becoming to, to, um, to have uh, impact on our everyday life and have impact on, on our everyday objects. So we're in a kind of, um, we're at a kind of crossroads but we need to have some public debates uh, about um, all these developments. So it means that people in the street, they need to know what's happening, what's going on. But also politicians need to be educated. And um, the engineers that are basically driving all of this, they need to take on a more social and political position. So at the moment, um, what we see is that the technological developments are driven by a quite a small group of, like I say, a small, like a particular intelligence, especially the engineers and the scientists at this moment, who want to classify everything, measure everything, objectify everything, turn everything into data, which is good to a certain extent. I mean, it brings a lot of transparency. It uh, exposes a lot of overhead in business practices and in government practices. So it brings a lot of agency to people, to simple people like us, citizens. But, um, but at the same time, um, we need to know more about it. So the, the engineers and the, the people that are doing all these things, they, um, they've made basically everything smart. So they've made smart uh, wearables, so you can have your Fitbits and your trainers and they have smart clothing, and they have smart homes, they made the home smart, they made smart coffee machines, smart washing machines, the washing machine knows what's going on in the home and things like that. It's all good. And then they have built uh, connected cars, sort of like the cars are connected, and at some point, uh, because everybody is filling in their GPS, um, we will have cars that will take over the control of other cars. There will be lead cars in packs. Because if, you, if you're all driving from Malaga to Madrid, then at some point on the highway, some car can become a lead car and take over the controls of the other cars that become connected and self-driving and autonomous. And, um, and in our cities, there's talk about the smart city, so we have smart parking, smart lightning, sort of all of these things, a lot of connectivity and cameras in the streets. And this is all good. So the engineers have built all these smart domains. And now we have to ask them to also help build a smart society. So it's not about building better wearables, better smart homes, better smart cars or better smart cities. Now we need to think about what does a smart society look like? So that's basically what I'm, what I'm doing. Well, basically, um, the, um, well, practically, I think uh, technology is, is, is basic, is, is also this, it's also the microphone. So technology is also the pencil. So technology is all around us. So we cannot, we as, as humans, we cannot help but to use technology because it's all around us. But, um, um, but what I'm interested in is in all of these the sensors that are now being attached to objects. So this Internet of Things and this technology that we talk about basically has two main uh, strands. There's a big passive strand and this is about tagging. So objects will have barcodes, smart codes, um, smart tags, uh, near field communication, radio frequency identif identification, which is also in your passport and your bank cards. This is quite passive. So it means that all items, all goods become traceable and also digitally addressable. So everything, every t-shirt, every, every can of Coke, every packet of coffee, all of this becomes ready to be used in that huge system. And then there is active sensors, and these are actually sending data or sending information. So this combination is basically like air. 
So you might as well ask, what are you not doing with technology? Because we're doing everything with technology. And if you're not interviewing me now, you'll be on your smartphone immediately for the rest of the day. So also doing things with technology. So we might as well ask, what are you not doing with technology now? Well, in a way, um, in a way, it's very good to have these goals, but in another way, it's quite human. So we feel that um, once we sort of attain these goals, we might have sort of be we, we're going somewhere. Now, this is quite human, so we need small uh, success steps. Otherwise, we we will not be able to be motivated. We all know this climate change. We all know we're probably going to drown and somehow we're not acting. Like we all know there's too much plastic in the ocean, but we're still using plastic bottles and we're producing them. So we as humans, we are very, let's say, we're not that smart. So it means that we, we take care of ourselves on a daily basis. And even tomorrow is a little bit further away. If I, I sort of, today we had lots of good food and lots of good cakes. And I know if I if I have two cakes or three three cakes, I might have sort of be in trouble at some point somewhere else, and I might even get 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 too much weight at some point, which I don't want. So, but I still eat it. So because I'm I'm human and I'm pretty dumb in that in that sense. So we need these goals that are larger than ourselves, bigger than ourselves, beyond ourselves, in order to to act. But we, as humans, we also need small success factors. So that's why I think it's clever to, to try to do this and also somehow streamline attention of people on these goals. Yeah, it's my first time here, but I think it's really impressive. Um, it's a very good format of doing the interviews. So it's a tricky always because um, it's a it's a good balance between people get people to talk about themselves and their projects so you don't want to talk a bit too much about yourself be, be, when you're out there because people may think oh my god this guy is sort of like or this girl is really thinking oh I'm doing so well and I did this and I did this and I did this and it, it made and at some point you sit in the audience and you think well okay well sort of but um, in this day and age of super empowered individuals. Um, we cannot sort of deny that a lot of the things that I've been doing are also part of me doing them. So it's, it's nice in a way to talk a little bit about yourself in this kind of interview setting, to make it a little bit personal. Because basically what we see here is um, we see successful people or people who have done certain things but it's not really so brilliant or so good, or you don't have to be a genius to do it. But what it does show is that in all the other centuries, it would, would be so difficult to do what we do now. So if I did in the 16th, 17th, 18th or 19th century, what I do now, I'd be like a state, or I'd be like a, a pope, or I'd be like a, a king or I'd be like a rebel or, or be in jail. <laughs> so, because um, it's only because of the net, TCP IP pass on the packet in the 50s and WW HTML in the 90s, which the, with the, the web, the internet and the web combined, that I was able to build all the networks that I'm building. It's not, it's not because I'm so good. It's not because I'm so clever, but it's because the world was so bad <laughs> before that. So all the people that we see here on stage are people that need flow, that are connectors, that are people that want to uh, spread messages and they need to be able to work, to operate. So I can work when there is flow, when I got, when, when I got ideas and I know people and I've got a network. So I'm building networks because I need to have flow. If I find a blockade, I get, I get upset. Then I want to I wanna remove the blockade. So, Basically, people like me and also people like who are talking here, these connectors, uh, they are a special kind of intelligence. And this intelligence was always blocked in the other ages because it was so, in, the other, in all the other ages, everything was so instrumentalized, was so awful, basically, was so bad. It was like one person saying, 
like we do this and then it's just one person saying we do this and then like a million people having to do this. I mean, this is ridiculous, but it, it worked for a long, long time. So what I think what we see here is we see people that, um, um, that have built networks um, and that have built that successfully uh, because of the net and because of the fact that they will be able to do this. And then you also see if you allow people like me and people like us to do that, we're not causing trouble. We're not, uh, we, are, we are, of course, we're very critical of the situation, but we also, we always want to change the situation from the inside by bringing as much value as we can from the old situation into the new. We're not out here to create trouble or to break a situation or to, to cause a revolution or to begin a rebellion. Um, this is also no longer really possible with the millennials because you will just think it's a movie and, 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 and uh, start to think it's a real revolution. No, I don't think so. So I think um, it's a very good context of meeting people who are in the same situation uh, with the same tools, being able to build these networks. Again, not because they're so clever or I'm so clever or we're also genius, uh, but simply because we can and imagine just think for one second, if we were able to do this in the 15th century, if we had the net like in, in, the, in the 4th century, we wouldn't have all these crazy wars, we wouldn't have all, these crazy, all this crazy nonsense, all this crazy poverty, all this crazy inequality. Um, and so I think uh, this is uh, good, this is how it should be. Simple people using good tools, coming together, organizing, collaborating for um, bringing more balance to the situation. And I think it's happening, so I'm very uh, happy to be here. <laughs> simply, simply join, simply be here. It's, it's difficult to, um, to sort of uh, to have, to, have to market it. There's no, there's no need to market it. I would just simply say uh, be here. Then again, you also don't want too many people. So maybe don't come, <laughs> stay away. I think maybe that's the best thing to say. Yeah, you should stay away, don't come. <laughs>